What's up guys, Rudolinell here, coming back at you with even more Python code and more of the end curses, curses, and unit curses library module jumbled up extravaganza. Okay, so let's get to coding. I'm not even gonna do anything, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna waste time, screw that. Standard screen is initialized screen, end win, blah blah blah, okay. Okay, that's, that's good, that's good. Uh, I forgot to save this. I just overwrote Curse02. That's fine. Um, you guys can save this and call it whatever you want, but Curse02, okay. Nothing happens. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Good. <laughs> Man, that is... That's probably the first time I think I've ever said that. Nothing happens, and that's exactly what we wanted to happen. Okay. In this video, we're going to be exploring a little bit more of the getch uh, function. Now, I'm sure you guys remember getch allows you to get a character. Wow, get a character or I, I kind of combined those two words. Get a character, or, get a character, get a character or or. <laughs> All right, enough of me being stupid. It's going to allow you to get a character and wait for the user to input a key. So, you guys know the syntax, that's getch. Now, getch is going to return what it is that was pressed. So if I say C, that's going to equal, uh, C can equal get ch, and then once that happens, what I'm going to do is add string C, and I'm actually going to convert that to a string just to be safe, and then I'll get character again, but I don't care about what the value is that time. Alright, let's run this now, and I'm going to hit H. You can see H, and then it displays 104. What the heck is 104? <laughs> Alright, so Let's uh, let's see what happens here. Let's kind of experiment with this a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little bit of a thing here. A little bit of a thing. And I'm going to say, while running, and running can be a Boolean variable. Running can equal true. So it's seemingly an infinite loop. But I'm going to say key, that can equal get ch. And now I'll do a I'll I'll do some conditional statements here. I'll test if the key is equal to 27. Now, to you that probably sounds a little weird. But 27 is actually the key for the escape key. And that's what I'm going to be using to tell that we don't want to do this anymore. We're we're done. We're going to stop running the program. So if I were to do that, if the key is equal to 27, running can equal false, and we will break out of our loop. Let's just run the program now, see what happens. I can press as many keys as I want, blah, 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 and I can hit escape, and then there's a problem here. Running should equal false with a capital letter. I'm going to reset the shell. All right. Python curse 02, blah, 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 blah. Hit the escape key, and I'm back at my prompt the way that I should be. All right, so now let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's say we can print out. Actually, we'll move. We'll move the key first. We'll move the character. Um, ten characters down at the uh, first position in the x-axis. Move it down, and we'll say we can add to the screen. Add string. The key pressed was key code. Actually, let's just say the key code was. Now we can add on the string of our key. And let's let's run this, see how it looks actually before I before I go ahead of myself. If I run this, I can hit A, the key code was ninety-seven. If I hit S, key code is ninety um what was S? One one five. Okay. So now let's actually set this up so that it'll go back to the initial position up here because let's see what that says. Key code was 115S, because I don't want that extra letter to be stuck up there. So if I hit escape, break out of that, what I'm going to do is move this right back to the zero, 00 position. And I'm going to add some spaces on here. So if by chance it does get overwritten... Um, we can overwrite it itself with space characters. This is just a precaution. You really don't really have to worry about it, but hey, just something to do. If I run the code now, I can hit A. I can hit Q, actually. I hit that on accident. Key code is 113. A is 97. S is 115. D is 100. 
f is 102, blah, 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 blah. And let's even add on And the key was, and then I want to introduce to you something else. So, we can go ahead and say that the key code was, it's, I'm sorry, we can say the key was, because we can check with a function that's built into Python what this key code actually represents. Because the key code, or that numeric sequence that we keep getting, is actually an ASCII value. And for those of you that remember way back in my original Python language tutorials, we can use ORD. And that function will actually convert um, the number to an integer, I think. No, 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 no. It should be CHR, actually. CHR. Okay, ORD works the opposite way. So we can test if it was a certain key that be, that's being pressed. So we'll get into that later. But CHR is going to determine um, from the integer what the character was. So if we pass in key, that can um, add the character there. And let's go ahead and run this. Let's see what happens. I hit A. Key code is 97. The key was A, J, blah, blah, blah. I can hit O. There's the information there. I can even hit delete. And nothing happens. Okay, that breaks out of the program. I can hit shift, maybe enter. The key, was, key code was 10 and the key was nothing. I can hit space. The key was 32, and the key was nothing. Okay, so we can't get those characters. Alt, alt, I don't get anything. 120, X, Z, 122. So you can experiment with this and see what happens, especially with different kind of keys that aren't so much letters. And uh, we can actually see what all these values are. But let's say, what, what if we wanted to have a special functionality if the key was a certain thing? Let's say L if the ORD or let's say the character of the key was equal to a let's move it to the second thing and then we can just say I can just add the string yeah that's fine you pressed the a key And we continue so we don't have to bother with the rest of this code down here. We'll continue work because it's not in a for loop. Let's find out. If I hit A, it says you press the A key, but it doesn't display the information down there. And that that will stay up there even when I haven't hit the A key. So that's interesting. We're gonna we can work with that later on. But that's just being displayed there and it's not being removed. So I can test this in a different way too. I can just say if key is equal to the ORD because we can pass an A there and that will be the integer if the key is equal to that integer like 27 if I run this oh, inside the shell if I hit A it will still say you press the A key because that's exactly happening the same way that it happened with the other conditional statement it's just arranged in a different way rather than testing if the character form of the key is equal to A, it's testing whether the integer form of the key is equal to the integer form of A. So it's just testing a little bit of ASCII values and having some fun with them, but it's understanding the key, it's understanding the getch function a little bit more because it's going to be returning the ASCII value of a letter or any other key that you press. So with 27, we don't have an ASCII value for that. Or with enter, we don't have an ASCII value for that. So we kind of need to know what that key code is. So I'm going to change this to, rather than escape, let's change it to enter. If the key is 10, then it will stop running. Okay, let's run this. If I can hit enter, I'll just hit A at first. You press the A key. And then now if I hit enter, the program shuts down. It closes. We stop running. Running is false and we break out of our loop. All right. Easy enough, right? I mean, it's interesting, and that's the way that it works. It returns the ASCII value of a key. And sometimes they may, that may not be a letter, so you need to know the specific key code, but this is how you can figure it out if you want to do so. There are some constants set up in the uh, NCURSES library that allow you to do this, like arrow keys and that sort of thing, but with the arrow keys and the delete key, like you saw, when we ran the program, it would close right out or at least it would give us some really funky setup.
and if I can hit the delete key, you get some really different kind of information, like home, delete, backspace. It's not so much a, uh, a normal key. You have to be able to set it up with a specific um, function and call that will allow you to do this. So we're going to be getting into that in some s tutorials very soon, but right now we're all done. This is all we need to learn about for the getch function. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Just a little bit of an exploration with that function and learning a little bit more about the Encurses library. Okay, <laughs> thank you guys. I will talk to you later, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.